I didn't want to be emotional. Why the heck am I emotional? This wasn't supposed to be emotional. This was supposed to be a quick little update. Hello and welcome to the Hot Mess Express. I've been riding it all day long and I mean that in every way possible. We are in the midst of a heat wave and I have no air conditioning and floor to ceiling wall to wall windows with direct sunlight all day long. It is steamy. It has down now. It has gone down now, but now it's in the bedroom. Ah. I literally have direct sunlight all day in one part of the apartment or another because we get sunrise in the living room and sunset in the bedroom. So it's literally all day light. So it's very hot. And it's been one of those days energetically where everything goes wrong. You know those days. I know you've all had those days where like not one thing goes to plan. Even when you think it's gonna be like a simple, straightforward, easy day. Like we had nothing crazy on the docket today. Actually, there was hardly anything on the docket. There was <laughs> hardly anything. Yet somehow. <laughs> the day's packed with all was, sorts of issues. <laughs> it was just one of those days. So, but we're getting through it and everything gets solved. So. It's literally 6.30 in the evening right now. And I usually film all my videos by like 2 p.m. I've never, I don't think I've ever filmed like a proper sit down video this late in the day. No. That's telling you how this day went. And there's more to go. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Okay, that's not what this video is about. This video is going to be mostly positive and exciting. I am going to be giving you guys an update on my current wonderful Sir Galliper Guzman and oh, sorry, <laughs> another emergency peeing in the <laughs> inbox is it? As well as my new guide dog who is nameless, well actually they're not nameless, I just don't know their name because we are yet to know who my dog is. So okay. Galloper Goose, how is he doing? One thing that's been really interesting is seeing changes in him coming from changes in me. I was like, and I, you know, I've been like, I opened up about this a little bit back in like December, January, but for a lot of like last fall, winter, I was like very depressed and very much struggling with my mental health. I was struggling really bad with my anxiety again. I was struggling really bad with depression. I was like barely clinging on. I was quite literally like just getting by in life. I was doing the bare minimum to like function as a human and go to sleep and wake up again the next day. And so I was just in a overall very bad place. I was hiding it publicly. Um, because I didn't want to like put that on you guys um, because I knew that so many people globally were struggling that I like didn't want to burden anybody with that so I hid it for a long time until I literally felt like I could not hide it any longer and um, and I told you guys about it and something you know the decision to retire Gallup came in that time due to the fact that I was seeing his work going downhill his energy levels going downhill and something that's been very interesting is over the past like four or five months that my mental health has been going on an upward trajectory, so has he. And it reminds me that how much our own mental well-being truly does affect those around us. Because not only does you know my mental health affect my loved ones, my family, my friends, my partner, but it truly does like even affect my animals. I think Gallup was truly like picking up on my depression. I think he was truly picking up on my anxiety and it was like really affecting his energy levels. It was really affecting his work concentration. And so not only does mental health affect a human and their ability to do their job and like function in an adult capacity and like get by and do the things you need to do, but I think it very much affected my dog's ability to do his job. I think the depression he was picking up on from my energy was affecting his ability to do his job because I have noticed that since I've picked back up, he has too. And it's not been just that I've noticed, people around me have said, wow, like Gallup's a happier dog again. Wow, Gallup like has more energy and more focus again. 
And I've never had that experience with an animal in my life before. I have had animals, both pets and a previous service animal, during times that I've struggled with mental illness in the past, but I've never had one that has really um, clearly been like an empath and picked up that energy the way Gallup has for both the good and the bad. And so that's been the most interesting turn of events for me personally, being his owner and his handler, um, is seeing that change. And it's been like, I don't know, quite eye-opening for me and quite profound to see that. Um, because I do think it's a true reflection of how our own mental health affects others and how our how each individual person's mental health affects their ability to work and function. So that's one update. And also I think of course, one thing that has improved his quality of work is that he's working less. Um, not that I was actually going out very much at all during that time, but I do think that now that he is I would say staying home 50% of the time and then working 50% of the time. When he does get to work, he's like really enthusiastic and excited and focused. When he stays home and he sees me go with my cane, he's usually pretty like perturbed, you know? He's usually kind of like, I don't think that's a good tool, mom. I don't think that's a good replacement whatsoever. I really think you should grab my harness. And so he really like values and appreciates working. Whereas before it was really much more of a like, I, I don't want to work anymore energy that I was getting from him. So it's been super interesting. The other thing that I've noticed is that when I am out and about alone with Gallup, he is super focused and concentrated. It's like he fully understands that the burden, burden of responsibility to take care of me is solely on him. Whereas if I'm out with somebody like my mom, who he knows can help and guide me, he kind of like checks out. Like he's like, oh, okay, like somebody else is there to take care of her, so I'll let them do it and I'm gonna go sniff. So that's when I find he's most distracted and least likely to do his job is when I'm actually with somebody else, which is good. I feel fully confident going out alone with him and I kind of know that the times that I probably should just leave him home and take my cane is when I am going out with somebody else. Another thing I've noticed since transitioning him to retirement is how much more confident and comfortable I have gotten with my cane. That said, um, I recently made a video of talking more openly about guide dog discrimination. So please, please, please check that out. That video means so much to me and is so important and I would really appreciate people really watching it, listening, taking it to heart and um, sharing it with their loved ones to continue to raise awareness and have an important conversation that is not had enough. But something that's interesting is I notice how much that discrimination like really truly affects me because even when I walk into establishments with my cane, I'm like mentally and emotionally prepping to have a fight for my rights or to be denied. And I literally have my cane with me. Like that's how deeply the discrimination I face with my service dog has like affected me emotionally and mentally so i'm trying to like figure out how to cope with that better and i'm trying to come up with better coping strategies and mechanisms um i've literally like printed out the law on a piece of paper that i'm going to be carrying around with me so not only do i have my service dog id card that has the law but i have like the local bylaws and laws um and the rights like printed on a piece of paper that i can leave with them to be like here you keep these future reference i also feel like i'm going to start going around to restaurants and places i'm going to frequent in my neighborhood and introduce myself to management like i'm just really trying to be as proactive as possible and frankly i should not have to do any of this but it's in my best interest to do it simply because my mental health can't handle it all the denials that i've been facing recently and like all the fights i have to get in for my basic rights so yeah that's something that's been interesting that i've noticed what else have I noticed with Galloper Goose? I think the biggest thing I'm feeling right now going into getting my next guide dog is a bit of like fear and anxiety. As exciting as it is to get a new pup into my life, it's also extremely daunting. I think a lot of people don't understand how much work getting a new guide dog is. Not only do you go through weeks of facility training on a campus away from your home, away from friends and family, away from your day-to-day -day life and like your ability to do normal life things, but when you come home, it is like a solid year. I would say it takes a good year to get fully adjusted 
as a new team, as a new partnership. It is not a small amount of work. It is a very large amount of work. And that's daunting. It's daunting to sign up for like an intensive training program followed by like a year of, of, of just constant work and development on your relationship, your bond, your guiding, your teamwork. Um, so I'm a little bit like overwhelmed by the idea of it coming up. Um, and I feel like it's coming up even quicker than I felt like it would. I also feel scared because Gallup is overall been such an easy dog. He has been such a good dog. He is the most low maintenance animal I've ever owned. Obviously I have a cat who's extremely high maintenance. Whoever says that cats are quote, independent and low maintenance, not my girl. Heck no, she is very high maintenance, very high needs. And so Gypsy was far more high maintenance. Our family pet Rory was far more high maintenance. Like I've never had an animal so low maintenance and so well behaved, like truly so well behaved. It's quite shocking. Like all the time people are just in awe of him because he's so good. He's so good on harness, he's so good off harness, which is why it was quite shocking the behavior that he was exhibiting when I made the decision to retire him. Because, and even then, like, it, it's not like, like, he's just so, he's still so good. Like, it's, it's hard to imagine I'm gonna find another dog that is as good as him. And I don't wanna put that into the universe. Like, I wanna put the energy into the universe that I'm going to get a dog as good as him. But I just, like, truly don't know that they exist. Like, he doesn't bark, he doesn't jump, he doesn't, like, he does exactly what I say to do. He never begs or asks for anything from me. He's just so good and so easy to take care of. And I don't know, like, I'm scared because now I have a very high needs, high maintenance cat. And I'm scared if my next dog is, like, high maintenance, high needs. I don't know that I have the energy or the capacity to like stretch myself to take care of both and like be a good parent for both. So that's a little bit daunting and overwhelming in my mind. And I also think like the transition from one dog to the next is just always gonna be so hard because you know one so well and you don't, you don't know what the other one is. And it, it does take so long to really get to know the ins and outs of their quirks and their personalities and their likes and their dislikes and all of their little idiosyncrasies when they died that are unique just to them. And it's just, I think, yeah, a little bit, I'm feeling a little bit stressed and nervous for all of that ahead. At this point, things can always change, but at this point, I should be going to get my next guide dog in September. I don't know when in September, but I was called and told class will be in September again. Times are crazy, that can always change. But that is the plan as of right now, September will be the time I go and meet my new friend. Um, and of course that also means like a more, more officially saying goodbye to Gallup. No longer working him and, oh, I didn't want to be emotional. Why the heck am I emotional? This wasn't supposed to be emotional. This was supposed to be a quick little update. But anyways, yeah, like saying goodbye to him, it's fine, I'm fine. Um, and him going to go live with my parents. Oh, look, he's over there looking at you. <laughs> he's just looking up like, it's okay, I'm here, mommy. It's okay, everything's okay. Everything's okay. Such a sweet man. Yeah, just, it's weird to think, like, in just a couple short months, he won't be here every day. But I know, like, I couldn't handle three animals. Like, there's just no way I could handle a, two dogs, two large dogs and a cat in a small apartment. You know, I just know I couldn't handle that. And like, I also know... It would be very hard for the new dog. Wouldn't that be very hard? Exactly. I know for me personally, and this isn't for everybody, like, everybody's different and knows their own, like, emotional capacity. I know it would be very hard for me to bond with the new dog when I have my old dog in my life who I'm so bonded to. And I also know that it would be hard for Gallup to like be left at home and see me go out with a new dog and not him. So I know that I'm making the right decision for my situation and for him to have him live with my parents and not me, but 
it's a very hard decision to make. So yeah, I think I'm just, I'm excited. And I, I know that like, even though Gallup's guiding has actually improved since I made the decision to retire him, I know some of you are probably gonna say like, oh, why don't you, you know, just like keep him working for another year. The reality is like, he's been working for seven years and guide dogs retire between generally average dog retires between six to eight years of service um so he is actually retiring like within the window already and like if i tried to push it for another year i know with the world opening up again and my life only getting busier and me only going to be able to start traveling for public speaking and work again he doesn't have the energy or the capacity to go back to a full work schedule as my life is right now let alone have the work have the energy capacity to go back to a full work schedule when i'm actually traveling and so even though yes i've seen his guiding improve i've seen his energy and his personality improve um in the past few months that mine have i know that that isn't like something that's going to be sustainable for a year or year and a half to come and I know that it is still ultimately the right decision for both of us for him to continue to wind down work life and head to retirement. And very difficult as that decision still is, I just know it's what is meant to be for both of us. Being a large breed, like being 95 pound dog, larger breeds do tend to have a shorter lifespan. And he's always been an extremely sleepy dog. and. I would say a quite low energy dog and a slow dog like he was slow for me when they gave him to me and they recognized that but they also recognized that is actually what I needed in my life which I did and overall like his walking speed even though he's better now than he was a few months back like it just isn't what I need it just still isn't even though he's gone a bit uphill it's not enough that I could keep him working for over a year and defer getting a new guide dog for another year. So I still know it's ultimately best for all of us. It's just sad still and it's scary. And yeah, I wish I could just be fully excited for the new dog, but to be honest, I feel like far more anxious and overwhelmed about it than I do excited. Is that just today? Like No. <laughs> the whole, it's all the time? Yeah, every time I think about it, I get super stressed. But I don't think that would ever change. It's probably, it's, a, it's part of being a guide dog user, I would imagine. Yeah, I think if you get it's, close to your dog. it's different for everyone. You know, it's not, I can't say like, it's going to be the same for anyone else. Like, but for me, like I had a really tough time going from Gypsy to Gala. And I know this time won't be as difficult because it's not like, like with Gypsy, she died. It was super traumatic. It was very unexpected. It was my first guide dog. I was already like, dealing with PTSD and generalized anxiety. Like I was going through a lot, so it, it's not surprising that that was incredibly difficult. And I don't expect this one to be as difficult, but I am still like kind of overwhelmed by the prospect of everything that I know goes into the transition between the, the work of bonding and working with the new dog and the emotional toll of truly saying goodbye to Gallup. So that's where I'm at with it. So, Overall, to recap, Gallup's great. He's wonderful. He's in a really good place despite this and all the emotional things that have happened over the past few months. I am generally in a really good place as well, like far better than I was. It's a journey. I'm still recovering. I'm still healing, but I am in therapy and overall, I'm doing much better again. Not that this is an example of that. I'm also on the second day of my period, so those hormones probably aren't helping me. Yeah, so a new guide dog coming in September. As of right now, that's the plan. I still have my guide dog fundraiser happening. So as a reminder, these three items on fanjoy.co slash Molly Burke, 100% of sales are being donated to the Mira Foundation to empower more blind people to get guide dogs. Each guide dog currently, again, these figures are things that change year over year. Currently, guide dogs from the Mira Foundation are costing $40,000 per dog to train and get out the door to a blind person free of charge to us, the recipients. And of course, like all charities, the Mira Foundation has been affected by this past year and a half. And so any amount helps. 
and these truly are life-changing animals as you can see by just how emotional I am over mine. It's hard to believe that July is 14 years of me being a guide dog user. July 14 years ago, 2007, I received Gypsy and it's so wild to think about the fact that like in September I'll be receiving number three, like where the time has gone. I have been a guide dog user for an equal amount of years as I was before being a guide dog user, which is wild to think about. Um, and I do still have my GoFundMe up. Again, as a reminder, once we officially hit the $40,000 mark, we will, as a family, as the Killer Bee family, we will get to name a guide dog, future guide dog puppy in training. And I will provide updates on that guide dog over on at Molly's Guide Dogs on Instagram. I haven't been super active on that page over the past few months. If you saw the uh, I Lost More Vision video, you know I've been going through some stuff and lots of other things have been happening behind the scenes that you guys don't really know about, um, And so, but you will soon. I have an exciting announcement coming in July, so definitely make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Hit that bell so when my exciting announcement drops in July, you hear about it. I'm very excited. but. I will be getting more active on that account at Molly's Guide Dogs, especially leading up to training and during training and after and all that. So for all guide dog specific stuff, head to that Instagram page and the GoFundMe as of filming this is currently just under $31,500. So we really are getting very close to the goal and that isn't including the mer merch sales. Um, I have to total up the merch sales donation and add it to that. So I think we're very close to the $40,000 mark, which is amazing. And I can't thank all of you enough who both bought the merch and contributed to the GoFundMe. It is amazing what our little army here has done. I'm just so grateful. And I know the Mira Foundation is as well. Gallup is very grateful. Lavender is very grateful. We're all very grateful. It's pretty amazing to think um, that by you, my community, raising this $40,000, we will have been able to offset the cost of my guide dog, which means that money gets allocated to another person being able to receive a guide dog. So in a way, each and every single one of you that bought the merch or donated to the GoFundMe have contributed to my new guide dog um, and, and, and contributed to another person being able to get a guide dog and a puppy being able to be trained um, with, a, with a killer bee name. So it's very exciting and I'm, just filled with a lot of gratitude whenever I think about it. Um, if you would like to support this channel even further, please give this video a thumbs up. As I said, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, you can even check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Molly Burke for um, exclusive merch, exclusive posts and updates, private live streams and other stuff. And yeah, that's really it. That's all. Uh, I want to chat about today. This turned into a longer, more rambly, more emotional video than I expected it to, but welcome to my day-to-day -day life. Uh, I think that's where we'll end this. Have a beautiful day, you guys. Thank you for being in my life, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, if you like more Molly, you can click over here to see my recent haul of all the things I've bought because I'm blind, or you can click over here to see me um, review accessible beauty products for the blind.